Do you know that paralytics work kind of like a door? Let me show you. Okay, so your muscles have nerves that are attaching to it, and then that nerve is going to stimulate that muscle to contract. So basically what's going to happen is acetylcholine is going to bind to what we call the nicotinic receptor, a subgroup of them, in order to create muscle contraction. So where do depolarizing and non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents or paralytics come in? Well, let's start talking about the non-depolarizing. What non-depolarizing is going to do, it's going to go to that nicotinic receptor and it's going to block it. It's not going to allow acetylcholine to actually attach to it to open up its channel to create so that way sodium potassium can shift. It's not going to allow that to occur so no action potential can occur. So it's going to hold that door closed and not allow for anything to work creating its paralysis. In the depolarizing what's going to happen is that that depolarizing agent is going to bind to that nicotinic receptor and it's going to open the channel allowing for sodium potassium to depolarize, okay? It's gonna depolarize that cell and create the fasciculations and the muscle contraction initially. Now what happens though is that that succinylcholine, which is a depolarizing muscle blocking agent, is gonna hold that door open like this. And when it does that, we can't have a resetting of sodium potassium, which means that we're gonna basically be in the stagnant period where action potential can't occur, which is gonna create your depolarizing blocking agent or paralytic effect. Thousands are raving about our best-selling 100 Patients Scenario book, and so we started creating the expansion books to go along with it, including the cardiac arrest scenarios, we have the airway scenarios, pediatric scenarios, and the MCI scenarios. And you can get this entire bundle at the link in our bio.